A diol is a molecule containing two hydroxyl groups, and in previous reactions, we learned how to synthesize them through anti-addition. We first took our double bond and formed an epoxide that we then treated in acidic conditions to first protonate the oxygen of the epoxide, which is then open to attack by a nearby water molecule in a anti-addition fashion. But what if there was a case in which we wanted to control the reaction and put the hydroxyl groups on the same side spatially? or syn addition. The standard reaction we learn for forming syn 1,2 diols is reacting the alkene with osseum tetraoxide. The reason why this results in a syn addition is how the double bond reacts with osseum tetraoxide in a cycloaddition fashion, all in one step. Once this five-membered cyclic intermediate is formed, the intermediate can then undergo hydrolysis, leaving us with our syn 1,2 diol. Now there is a reaction we can compare this to, to help with some familiarity to why this results in syn addition. The double bond reacting with osseum tetraoxide is a concerted mechanism, meaning it happens in one step. This is very similar to what we discussed when talking about epoxidation with MCPPA. Throughout that reaction, the peroxy acid reacts with a specific face of the double bond to deliver the oxygen to both of the double bond carbons at that face, maintaining the original stereochemistry of the alkene throughout the reaction. You can use similar lines of thinking when thinking about this syn dihydroxylation reaction with osseum tetraoxide. This cycloaddition step only happens at a single face of the alkene. So the two oxygens are delivered to the same face of the alkene throughout the reaction. Whereas in one case, we deliver two oxygens to the same face of the double bond, and in the latter, we deliver one between both of the double bond carbons. And just as with epoxidation, we have to pay attention to our products because there's always the possibility of forming a meso product, or in other cases, forming enantiomer pairs.